Okay, we have here another interesting integral from the MIT Integration Me 2025 regular season 11. We've got the integral of square root of x plus square root x squared minus 1 dx. Okay, I got an interesting suggestion in the comments for this one from Soretto314 that we could do a trig substitution on this just right here. What often works is going to be substituting for cosine, sorry, for hyperbolic cosine. So how it's going to work is we can do x equal to cosh of t. The reason this is going to be nice is because x squared minus 1, this with some identities, this is going to be, this is going to be the same thing as cosh squared minus 1, but that's going to be the same thing as sinh squared of t. Just using the trig identities for the hyperbolic trig functions. But again, this thing's inside the square root. So let's just kind of do this on the fly. This is in a square root. This is in a square root. We could have absolute value, but what's going to happen is it's just going to end up being cinch of t. The reason we can drop the absolute value is because of the restrictions with the square root. For this part here, x is going to need to be either greater than 1 or less than minus 1. But the negative is not a possibility because we're still inside another square root. So we need x to be greater than 1. Therefore, cinch is always going to be greater than 0. So that's how we get to this right here. So next, let me take a derivative on this to get our dx value. So we get dx is going to be just cinch of t. So we'll go ahead and substitute on it. What's going to happen? We have our integral x is cosh t. So we have square root cosh t. We determine this thing is going to be cinch t. So we have cosh t plus cinch t. Then with our dx, we have cinch t dt. But for this thing, we've got another identity. Cosh t plus cinch t, if you put this back into exponentials, this is the same thing as e to the t. So what I want to do to make this work is let's put everything back into exponentials. So here we have e to the t inside the square root, so that's going to be e to the t over 2. Here for cinch, this is going to be e to the t just by the definition, e to the t minus e minus t over 2. I'll distribute this in here and bring the two up front as one half. And then what we're looking at is going to be e to the three halves t here minus e, adding exponents here, that's going to be minus one half t dt. We can just go ahead and integrate it. So we have one half, then we're going to have e three halves t. Take the reciprocal here, we get two thirds minus e minus one half t. Take that out in the reciprocal, this becomes a plus two right here. I can distribute in the one half and turn this into a one third, turn that into one. And then to simplify this, I wanna rewrite it a little bit different. So I wanna, we're gonna to need to simplify further and get it back to x. So I'm gonna write this as, I'm gonna write this piece as e to the t, three halves. And then on this one, let's write it as one over, we can write it as one half. Let's write it as one over square root e to the t for the minus one half there. So now we have e to the t here and here. Let's get a value for that. That won't be too much of a problem because we need to get back to t. I didn't write out an x, I didn't write out our value for t. So we can just take inverses here and we get t equals cosh inverse of x. But that's going to be awkward to simplify if we have e to the t and we have if we have e to the t, then we're going to have e to the inverse cosh. We don't really want that. But what we can use instead is the definition for, what we can use instead is the identity for inverse cosh, which is just going to be natural log x plus square root x squared minus 1. So now for our e to the t value, we're going to have this thing. We're going to have e natural log x plus square root x squared minus 1. But that's going to simplify nicely because natural log on the e will just cancel and we have x plus square root x squared minus 1. So let me plug that in here and here, and we'll continue from there. Okay, now a couple things to notice on this. I took the, our e to the t was this. I put it inside the radical here for the 3 halves because we have it the same expression here, which is the same thing we started with, so I wanted it all to look the same. And also notice at this point we've got it back to x, so this could be our solution. We could like put a plus c on here and be done. The only thing is this looks nothing like the solution we had in the other video. 
So really there was no problem getting to this point, but where it gets complicated is now, how do we make this look like what we got in the other video? Of course, it's totally optional and you could leave it, but I think it'd be interesting to see how can we make it look the same. Well, one thing I wanna do is use the expression we found in the other video for this radical, just kind of creating it as a perfect square. We found that this thing right here, this thing could be factored as square root x squared plus one plus square root x minus one all over square root of two. So I wanna manipulate these two pieces here to get it where we can bring these two fractions together. So for one thing, here we've got the reciprocal. So what we wanna find is, so over here we wanna find the reciprocal of this radical. What I can do is, let's rationalize this by multiplying by the conjugate. So here we just have, we just flip this, for now we just flip this thing here but let me multiply by the conjugate. And by doing that, we'll kind of leave this square root of two here, but the denominator, all this stuff, we're gonna get all kinds of cancellation. The X's are gonna cancel out and we're just left with a two here. And one more thing to clean it up, for square root of two over two, I'm gonna write that as, we can bring that together as one over square root of two. So I can write this piece right here as square root X squared plus one minus square root X, square root X minus one all over square root of two. So we'll capture that and we'll use this for this thing right here. Next, we have to take this and cube it. And again, we'll use this form right here. If we're cubing something, so the square root of two is gonna be easy. If we cube square root of two, if we cube square root of two, it's just gonna be like two to the three halves, but let's deal with the numerator. If you have something like a plus b and you cube it, you're gonna get a cubed three a b squared plus three a squared b plus b cubed. If we line it up with this thing here, we're like our a is this radical and our b is this radical. The first, the a cubed is gonna be x plus one, three halves. That's really promising because that's, that's a piece that we had in our other video. Then going to b cubed, same kind of thing. This is gonna be x minus one, three halves. Let's factor a three out of these two terms. I think this is the way to do it. b squared, we're gonna have we're gonna have this be like x minus one square root x plus one. And then the other one's just gonna be the opposite. It's gonna be x plus one times square root x minus one. Again, we're gonna cube the two, again, we're gonna cube the square root of two. And we do that, we get two to the three halves, so I can write that as two square root of two. So it's getting kind of messy. Let me take this, we'll throw it back in for this. We'll take this one, throw it back in here, and we can continue from there. Okay, now from here, we just need to combine these fractions. What I'm gonna want, I mean, I'm actually gonna wanna split this on the plus sign here, but one thing we can do first, let's get a common denominator here. So I can multiply in two over two. So we have two over square root of two here. So let's distribute in the one third and split the fraction right here. So the first one, now if I multiply in the three here, it's gonna become six square root of two. And then we've got just this stuff right here. Then on this second piece, we'll deal with this chunk right here because then when I multiply in the one third, it's gonna cancel with this three. So this is all gonna be over two square root of two. So because we've got the same denominator here and here, I can bring this all together, but I kinda of need to distribute out this X minus one. So like how it's gonna look, let's see, we'll have. So let me actually separate out these X's and X plus one. So we're gonna have like distributing this in here, we're gonna have X square root X plus one and then we have another x times square root x minus one. Let me kind of bring this together like this. So this is gonna be plus square root x minus one. Then we're gonna have minus square root x squared plus one. Then here we're gonna have plus square root x minus one. Let me extend this out. Now we're gonna have here, we distribute in the two, two square root x plus one minus two square root x minus one. Now, when I clean this up, we got the square root x plus one in common here, two copies minus one. I can cancel that with one of these. Same kind of thing, I can cancel this with one of these. Now, when I rewrite this, getting rid of this, when I rewrite this numerator, we can put this back together. Like here we have square root x plus one, x and a one coefficient. So I can write this as x plus one times square root x plus one. And then same kind of thing on the x minus ones we can write this one as x minus one here. So we have x minus one times square root x minus one all over two square root of two. But now let me bring down this piece right here. 
And then again, to get a common denominator, let's multiply in a three here. So when we do it in the denominator, this is gonna become a six. We'll just do it like this. We'll multiply in the three here. And then notice here, x plus one to the one times one half. This is x plus one to the three halves. And same thing over here. This is gonna be x minus one to the three halves, which tells me we can combine it with what we have here. So when we do that because we've got threes in front, combining with one copy over here, we're gonna end up with a four that we can factor out front. So let me do it over here. So we're gonna have four in front, all this stuff here, all the same stuff we have in the numerator right here, over six square root of two. Clean this up, cancel out two, four over six is two thirds, multiply in square root of two over square root of two, but then I can cancel again, two, this is the same thing as two, so that's gonna cancel here. And so for my final solution on this, we get just square root of two over three, x plus one to the three halves, plus x minus one, three halves, add a plus c, and that's it. So I thought that was a really nice alternative method. And I think if you didn't have to do the algebra, it's probably just as quick or maybe quicker than the other way, just because hyperbolic trig substitutions work so well when you've got something like this in the radical. I don't really see too many shortcuts with the algebra, but maybe I missed something. I kind of put this together at the last minute. Okay, that's it for today. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.